Welcome to New Jerusalem Holy Temple. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Greetings to one and all in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's promise is taken from John chapter 16, verse 20. And it reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Jesus warned his people earlier in this lecture that they will face hate and persecution from unbelievers. As you can see in John chapter 15 verses 18 and 19 and John chapter 15 verse 21. But he has also guaranteed the arrival of the Holy Spirit. As we can see in John chapter 16 verses 7 and 13. The disciples were particularly perplexed by Jesus' comment about being unseen, then seen, which served as a part of that assurance. As we can see in John chapter 16, from verses 16 to 19. Jesus makes it obvious that what is about to happen won't be pleasant by once again mentioning the hostility of the world and the suffering of his disciples. Jesus' statements like, it is not so horrible, or you should be joyful about this, are meaningless to believers. Instead, he instructs followers to see past their sufferings because there is a higher goal. The disciples will witness their master being arrested and killed in this instance, as we can see in John chapter 18, verses 1 to 3, and John 19, verse 18 only for him to be gloriously raised from the dead. Jesus will relate this to the birthing in the following lines. Nobody even with the modicum of common sense would convince a woman that giving birth is not that unpleasant or that she shouldn't experience agony. That pain does have a reason or a benefit though. When the suffering is done, there is a blessing that is so great that it eclipses the memories of the suffering. In no way are the memories forgotten, yet the happy outcome much outweighs how awful the suffering was. The disciples will go through comparable circumstances. The disciples that Christ must suffer and die in order to atone for the world's sins, as we can see in Mark's chapter 8 was 31. The coming days will be particularly gloomy and terrifying for people who closely follow Jesus. However, the results will be significant and transform the globe. Jesus uses the example of childbirth to clarify this. Although giving birth is a hard process, the benefits are enormously worth afterwards. Happiness over the new baby greatly exceeds regrets over the difficult delivery. Jesus makes it obvious that what is about to happen won't be pleasant by once again mentioning the hostility of the world and the suffering of his disciples. Jesus' statements like, it's not so horrible or you should be joyful about this, are meaningless to believers. Instead, he instructs followers to see past their sufferings. So, my brothers and sisters, we have to see the higher goal. The higher goal is that we will be with God in heaven. So, what Jesus tells us here is, like the childbirth, when the mother goes through all the pain, but when the baby comes, the pain is forgotten. In a similar manner, when we do the work of God, we will get persecuted, we will get hated, but we should remember that our higher goal is that we will be with Jesus Christ in heaven. So that should be the outcome. So that's what he meant when he turns our sorrows into joy. So let us remember this promise that whatever sorrows we have, it will definitely be turned into joy by going into the kingdom of God. Let's close our eyes and pray. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, we thank the praise the Lord for giving such a beautiful promise that thou has given us today. Lord Jesus Christ, Thou will turn our sorrows into joy. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to bear the persecution 
and help us to see at our higher goal and the higher outcome, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, whatever sorrows you have, we have, Lord Jesus Christ, you will turn that into joy. And help us also to remember that our higher outcome, Lord Jesus Christ, and help us to go through any kind of persecution that we face because of you with confidence and with assurance that we will be blessed abundantly. And whatever pain we're going through, thou shalt definitely turn that into a joy and make it as a blessing for us. Lord, we ask all these things today, Lord, and we also pray that thou be with us in all our daily activities. I ask all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day. Oh, 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 oh,